He's pooping behind me, isn't he? Yep, he's doing it. He's doing it. He's pooping. I knew it. Lex! Yes, good boy! Good boy! What's up family, my name is Eric Ita and I'm a dog trainer and if you don't already know, I'm going to be asking you to subscribe to this page because it is a new page and we're trying to build a community here, a community of dog trainers, a community of people who like to train dogs. We're at this beautiful park here in Las Vegas and Lex has been with me for one week. One week ladies and gentlemen, this is the beginning of week two. Today is Monday, Tuesday. I'm not sure what day today is, but here's what's going on. We are doing some off-leash training. I've only had legs for one week and yet we have trust. Off-leash trust. How do we build off-leash trust? I'll tell you how, and I always say this, we're trying to capture the dog's natural decision making. Whatever decision they make that we like, we're going to reward them. It's called free shaping. Here, yes, good boy. Oh, good boy. The great myth around dog training is that balanced trainers are constantly trying to use force, uh, negative reinforcement, positive punishment to get the dogs to do things. If I don't have something a dog needs, they're not going to pay attention to me. But I also think it's important for us to create boundaries, for us to tell them that, hey, do not go to the street. If you had a child running to the street right now, you wouldn't go take things to lure them away from that. You would go snatch them up and you would yell at them and tell them, listen, I don't want you going to the street. The street is bad. The game we're playing here is a very simple one. I've got treats, I've got something that Lex wants, and I'm going to let Lex make decisions. This is a beautiful park. There are things to sniff, there are decisions to be made. Lex is allowed to make any of those decisions, but every time he comes back to me, I'm going to reward him for it. Now, am I going to let him stray too far before I call his name? No. Right now, he's all the way over there, right? He's got freedom to roam all around this park if he wanted to. He's got the freedom to run away from me if he wanted to. But because we're constantly rewarding, good boy, here, good boy, we're constantly rewarding and letting him roam freely, then he starts to build the association that running to me is a rewarding thing. Lex, come here, good boy, good boy. I cannot trust him. This is a dog we're dealing with. I cannot trust that he's not going to run into the street right now. The only thing I know for sure is that I am making myself just as valuable or even more valuable than everything that's going on here. Lex! Yes, good boy! And so that whenever I do call him, we're playing a game and the game is that you're getting a reward. Good boy, good boy, come here. And I'm going to make myself as much fun as possible. Good boy, go, go play. And I actually want him to go away from me because I want to call him back because I want the game to continue. And so he's looking around. He's going to realize eventually that I am actually the most fun thing here. I'm the only thing that's interested in playing with him. I'm the only thing that's interested in giving him rewards. And so this is a habit that's going to be built over the repetition, over a period of time. Come with me and let's see what he's doing. Lex, buddy, what are you doing? Huh, what are you doing? Lex is beautiful. You're a beautiful pup. You're a beautiful pup. Good boy. All right, just gonna go ahead and rub some of this slobber right back on you, on your buddy over there. Where are we going? Where are we going? Huh? Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Yes, good boy. See, we have to be fun because we want the dogs to want to be around us. Hey, here. Good boy, sit. Good, down. Good, sit. Good, down. Yes! Throw some food for him to find. Good boy. Good boy. Good. We're going to engage his nose, engage his senses. All of these kinds of things add to the enrichment. They're very beneficial things for us to do with our dogs because we're teaching our dogs that it is so much more fun to be around us. We're going to turn everything we do into a game, interactive game. So there's really no need for him to go anywhere. There's really nothing else that's going on. There's no one else that's going to give him love and affection. There's no one else that's going to give him delicious treats. And to be able to trigger that response where he has to look around for me, whenever he does come to me, I will go away from him. See that? Go away from him. Go away from him. Go away from him. And then I will engage him. Good boy. Good boy. You know, dogs have a thing called fear of missing out. FOMO. It's a very serious thing. I've talked about this in previous videos. The dogs, they act like they want to go do stuff. They act like they want to go be other places. 
They actually want to be with you. You just have to make yourself fun. You just have to make yourself more rewarding than whatever the thing else that's going on. Most of the time they'll go into things and they'll realize that that thing is not really fun. They'll come back to you eventually. That's not a good thing because that means that the dog does not see any value in interacting with you. They get so much time with you at home that they're thinking to themselves, you know what? I'll get to him when I get to him. I see him all the time at home. It's not a big deal. We play all the time. We're on the couch all day long. It's not a big deal. So that's why we also have to create separation so that they do not develop separation anxiety. So that they're actually interested in being starved a bit of our attention, being starved a bit of our affection. That way it has more value. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. Look at this slobber. Just look at this. Look how, look how much slobber it is. It's so much. You're so slobbery, puppy. Let me go ahead and rub this on you. There you go, we'll give you a bath when we get home. Come here, puppy. Good. Down. Good. I'm gonna walk away from him. I want him to maintain his down position. I'm not asking anything much. Just maintain your down until you're here. Okay, there we go. Whoa, what was that? But am I going to punish him for it? No, because look, he came to me eventually, didn't he? Good boy, I'm going to reward him for that. So I'm not going to punish him unnecessarily for nothing. Okay, because there's no need for it. If I said come to me and he chose not to, and I yelled at him, what do you think is going to happen the next time around? He'll definitely not come to me. What do you think is going to happen when I use his name? When I call him, I say, Lex, come to me, and he chooses not to. And then I go, Lex, 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 and he chooses not to. Every time I say Lex, the value in that name is going to diminish dramatically. It's going to diminish drastically. Okay, right? So we don't want to keep asking the dogs for things. We just want to say things one time. I just want to say Lex's name, Lex, one time. Sit, down, sit. There we go, good. I just say it one time. And if I say it, yes, I can reward him for it. And then he learns that this word means what it means. Yes means yes, no means no, stop means stop, and go means go. I'm not a rapper, but ladies and gentlemen, down. Good boy. Ah, just checking, just checking. Lex, yes. Good boy. Well, there you have it. Because we're law-abiding citizens, we're going to put this back on for safety and security. And we're just going to go about our business. So thank you guys for watching this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe. I just told you the second time around. And I'll see you in the next video. Let's go, bud.